We have actor, singer, songwriter, and star of the new movie Transformers Rise of the Beast out June 9th. Anthony Ramos, welcome to the show. I'm trying to tell you you're cooking. Yo, what's good? What's good? No, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. No, I'm hyped. I'm excited. Let's go. I'm telling you, so we're fans in this household. My son watches Hamilton faithfully. My wife is a Dominican from New York. So come on now. You just know she loved in the Heights. So we're excited to get going, though. But honestly, I'm always excited because like you, you look mad. How old are you? You look mad young because you're I'm only saying that because you're rolling right now. Is that a thing in Hollywood? Don't ask it. But I'm just saying you're rolling and you've been a part of like major projects now Transformers. So what even gets you excited about a role? Is it the script? who's starring in it the franchise because you've had some amazing roles so far in your career yeah no nah, i'm you know i'm 31 i like wow. i love I, you know i'm you know i'm excited i'm you know i'm pumped about it's you know the roles the story is always for me the the, the most important thing it's like what are we saying you know and and um you know like what 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 is the potential of what we can say sometimes you know i'll, I'll do a movie and the script is not you know, I, I necessarily look at the script. I won't look for like a finished, co- like complete story. Like I won't be like, "Oh my gosh, this is the best script I ever read." Is is there enough here where we can improve this? You know, where we can turn this? Because it's also like if you have a collaborative director. You know, I've been a part of movies where the script looked like one thing when we started, but it, it com- you know, it looked like a different thing when we finished. You know, uh, and and I think that I mean, almost on every film I've ever done. You know, the, the script, the way it started. So that's normal? Like that you just get a script and then what happens? Like the day of the set, like, do you deliver it different? And they're like, oh, I like that. Or like, how does that come about where it changes? Well, we rehearse sometimes. Sometimes I'll be like, you know, when we're in rehearsal, we like, you know what? Maybe, maybe if we do it this way, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe, maybe if I say this, maybe if I say these lines this way, this might be better. Or, you know, sometimes we'll be on set and I'm like, yo, this line is not really hitting, man. Like, and I'll be thinking about it, thinking about it, and be like, you know what? What if we cut this line here, we put this one here, and then I'll just say something this right here instead of what's written? Wow. You know, and then directly be like, okay, yeah, dope, great. You know, like that's crazy. You know, like I mean, yeah. you basically directed a little bit too, and I know that's kind of like how the maturation happens. You know, I was talking to Michael B. Jordan, he was like, "Look, I already do it with my part." So when Creed three happened, I felt like I could step into that role. So is that like kind of the maturation of actors where you just start to do that yourself? Yeah, I mean, when you you know you work, you start working on enough scripts, you start to, and you also it's also like life, right? You start to realize that, you know, when you're having a conversation with with someone. You know, most of the time we're paying attention to the whatever the meat of the conversation is, right? Whatever the how, how do you just get straight to the point? You know, and it's basically like you only got an hour, and you know, you only got an hour and fifty minutes, hour 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 and a half to hour and fifty minutes in a movie to tell this story. You they can't. There's no time to dance around what you're trying to say or kind of find your way to what you're trying to say. You, that's what rehearsal's for, right? You, you, you dance around what you're trying to say until you figure out what you want to say and then you just say that. And you cut everything else. You cut everything else around it. That's getting in the way of you just getting straight to the point. You know what I'm saying? Like, because yeah. you, got, you got to get to the point. Every scene, you got to get to the point. You know, get straight to it. I mean, no, and that makes sense because it's even like right now, look, I got 24 minutes. I'm going to get right yeah, to it with you in a it's... sense of I'm going to get right to it. And you have a, like, you act along like mega stars and even another star, Dominic Fishback is who on fire right now coming off a of swarm that went crazy. So what was it like filming Transformers? Then you're cutting up the scenes and you're talking about rehearsal. What's it like almost doing that dance alongside another star like Dominic Fishback? Well, I mean, when you work with someone like that, you know, she, Dom's always thinking about everything. Like you got to see her notes. Like she makes me feel like a like a like a failure at life. <laughs> I'm like, yo, like you just look at her notes, the way she breaks down scripts. You know, like we just have two different ways of working. You know, I'm very like a lot, especially a lot of my ideas will come in rehearsal or they'll come in like, you know, uh, sometimes when I'm reading a script by myself, the ideas won't come as quickly as when I'm 
reading it out loud with a cat with the castmate or whether we're when we're doing it on set and i'll be like oh shit you know what we actually don't even need those three lines because if i'm gonna walk right here already or if i'm holding this card in my hand we don't need people to we don't have to tell people what my the organization i work for if i'm holding a card and you can just do a uh we could just literally do a uh an insert of you shooting the card in my hand come cut back to my face or cut back to her face. We are, boom, the audience knows exactly who I work for. We don't, we, so we can cut that line or cut those three lines explaining them who I work for. We just get right to it. You know, like, so the ideas will come when, you know, sort of like for me, like when, when we're in it, when we're in the mix, you know, a lot faster, you know, I still get ideas when I'm reading the script, but you know, but for like for Dom, she's so academic. Um, I mean, she was a valedictorian in school, in high school. Like, she's so... Dang, in, I No, Dom that. is like, she's like, she's brilliant. And wow. the way she breaks down scripts, you know, um, a lot like who I'm working with right now, Daisy Edgar Jones, reminds me of Dom in that way. Like, me and Daisy were going over a scene the other day, rehearsing um, together. And it was just she and I, and we was talking to, to this gentleman, Kevin, who's actually, you know, meteorologist here in... Uh, and working with us in Oklahoma on this on this movie to make sure that we get all the facts right, everything we're saying is correct, scientifically correct. And I'm talking about yo, this guy was saying shit to her on the on the phone, and she was writing at a lightning speed pace. I was like, yo, how the <laughs> fuck is everything. she doing it? everything, everything, yo? And I like as you know, and I told her on set two days ago when we were together, I was like, yo, I just want to let you know that I was in awe of your. <laughs> artistry and brilliance the other day. I just wanted to say that out loud to you. <laughs> but you know, when you're working with actors Whoa. like that, you know, it's, it, it makes the job um, a lot easier and more exciting too, because, you know, you know that you, you in it with, you know, someone who's bringing just as good, if not better ideas as you, you know? That's facts. That's facts. It reminds me of sports, like where if you you got a teammate that's yeah. like you see them holding up the squad, you like, all right, let me get in my bag and start to figure out how I can help. And you mentioned mentioned Daisy Edgar Jones. You uh, also Glenn Powell is in your upcoming Twister sequel. And I saw that fans like when they see y'all filming, fans is taking photos. Like, oh my god, I saw Anthony yeah, Ramos yeah. at the cafe. <laughs> so what is that like when you're filming a movie? Like. Are people like watching the whole scenes? Are they recording? Oh, like, cause fans recognize you. They stay all day. Some, some, some will <laughs> stay all day. Like there was, there were these what? two women that sat at the cafe across the street the whole day. We should, we shot for 13 hours and they were there all 13. What? And then what, what happens if they're filming like spoiler alerts? Like what's going on? I mean, you know, security will go across the street and be like, oh, can you, you know, stop recording and shit. But I mean, they can't, you know, you, you really don't know what's going on unless you can hear what's happening. You know, and they, gotcha. they can't really, you know, we were shooting in this coffee shop. It literally, it's just videos of two people sitting in the coffee shop shooting something, but you don't know what they didn't know what we, what we're For shooting. 13 hours Yo, in the she coffee was shop. out there dedicated. Like she was sweet though. You know, she was like, yeah, can you ask me to come across the street, take a picture, you know, take a video for a daughter and stuff. You know, people, people are usually really nice. You know what I'm saying? They just fans of movies and, you know, fans of, the work, you know, so it's, it's, no, it's, you know, it's, it's sweet, man. It's nice. But I mean, the fans are really, I mean, cause sports and entertainment, we're a sports and entertainment podcast. So we like cover both sides. Cause I feel like they're so synonymous. Like I played in the WNBA 11 years, but now that I'm on the other side, I can see that it's synonymous. And even like, we got to hit up the Hamilton fans because you're iconic for that. Like, I mean, I'm a huge fan of I can't uh, of Hamilton, but do fans ever come up to you and start singing your bars like, "My name is Philip, I am a <laughs> nah, poet." <laughs> nah, <laughs> yo, that's a lie. nah, it, it happens. It happens less uh, now, but for sure, the first like three years after I left the show, probably from like 2017 to about 2020. Uh, you know, but I think the pandemic, you know, the movie coming out kind of gave it a resurgence. So I think it kind of died down the last like year, actually. So, you know, the movie g g gave people that extra battery in the back. They were like, now, now, now that then that started happening a little more, a little more. But um, but nah, it don't, it don't really happen that much. But but uh, but it's cool. It's cool to know that, you know, a lot of people were moved by by that that show, you know, definitely, definitely. And OK, I told you, like, we're sports and entertainment. 
<clears throat> and I got to ask because I found out that you are an athlete too. You were on track to play NCAA men's baseball. Yeah, like it was that. D3 though. It wasn't, I'm not going to go on here and be like nothing crazy. Oh, like, shit. yo, I was D1, all state, all country. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, nah. I was going to play. So you was going to go D3. Okay, let's even say D3. Because, like, look, I got a son right now that people want a a scholarship in general. Like, you saying D3, like, but D3 is D3. Everybody ain't getting D3. But what made you choose? Like, I know it wasn't the top level of baseball, but was it just the passion that you had more for the entertainment space? Or was it just like you thought, man, I can go farther in entertainment. That's where I'm rolling. Nah, no. I mean, honestly, what happened was all my applications got withdrawn from all the schools I applied to, and including the school that I was going to go to to play. Like, uh, uh, or rather, the, you know, the, the two schools I was considering, every application got withdrawn because I didn't, I didn't um, get my financial aid form in in time, the FAFSA sheet, you know, the, the form you got to fill out for how much financial aid you're going to get or how much you qualify for. So because I didn't get that form in, you know, we were going through, we was going through a lot at the time. And, um, you know, it just, we just, um, yeah, so we just, we missed the deadline and, um, and basically acting was like, it was almost like this one school was the last resort. I was just uh, telling, talking to I uh, had a meeting about to start telling the story. Like I almost went to the Navy. Like, you know, I was going to apply, you know, uh, enlist in, 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 in the Navy and, and uh, you know, the recruiters were calling the house and shit. And um, my mom kept hanging up. Like he doesn't live here, you know, shit like that. You know, like <laughs> mama was like, no baby. Yeah, he not yeah. Going. yeah. True. Like, and the, you know, my high school theater teacher, you know, I started theater when I was 16. Cause I did, it was a, ta- I thought it was a talent show. It ended up being a musical. I was like, Oh shit. She's like, well, you know, we'd love to still have you. I was like, I don't know. I don't really act like that. She was like, you should try it. So I did. Wow. And I loved it. So I just kept doing it in my junior and senior year. And this teacher, like, she helped me, you know, she she gave me the pamphlet to this school in New York called AMDA. It's a two-year school. You study musical theater or acting. I studied musical theater there. But but um she helped me she she helped me write the essays for the for the application. She paid for the application, she sent it out, she helped me with the audition material along with another teacher named Ms. H, Ms. Hong Violette, who was my Shakespeare teacher at the time in school. Um, you know, I, I couldn't afford the school. Then Sarah, the director, she wrote a, a letter to Jerry Seinfeld Scholarship Foundation at the time. He had a uh, and and um and I went and met with them and I just told them my story and they were like you know, I was just like, look, I need a chance. You know, I just need somebody to take a chance on me. And then basically, you know, I left. My grades weren't that good, but they called me a couple of days later. Like, yo, you know, we decided to give you the scholarship for any school you want to go to for four years. And yeah, what? it was crazy. Like I got into AMDA, couldn't afford it. You know, so it was every, all this stuff was happening, you know, back to back. These like miracles happening for me, um, you know, consecutively. It was like a blessing, you know, and it was like life kept showing me that. You know, I felt like it was God showing me like, yo, this is this is where you're supposed to be. And, and you know, I think in that in those moments, um, especially when I got that scholarship, I was like, right, I think the baseball thing is is that's a dub. I think I'm done with baseball. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a wrap, wrap at that um, point. I mean, you got your steps ordered when stuff like that yeah. happens. That's really crazy to yeah. hear. And it even makes me think about you posted the other day that you took a DNA genealogy test and found that you are the great, your great grandfather was a king. So listen, you talk about ordering your steps. I mean, you are the descendant of a king. Like I was like, I couldn't like, there were nine, I think nine Kings in the Guanche tribe in the Canary islands. Um, before, uh, before the, the islands were taken by the Spanish and my group 16th, removed the great grandfather was one of the nine kings i couldn't believe it like i was like yo i couldn't like he, it's like dr henry gates is sitting in front of me like how does it feel how does it feel uh um knowing that you are the descendant of a king i was like what <laughs> like, well, how do you even answer that like <laughs> and then and well also what was hilarious was when, when we uh when we start when we started the interview because you know he's a you know, he started that show, Finding Your Roots. It was only for like African American actors or anybody of you know, you know, African descent, things like that, right? And and then in the third season, kind of opened it up to people of all races. But he made me laugh when he said, before we started, he's like, 
oh, I'm about to blow your mind, young man. He said, I'm about to tell you how black you are. <laughs> and I started cracking <laughs> no. up. And uh, So what was he meaning? Like, what did he mean in, in specific with just that? Just like, like, you know, I found, you know, they do percentages of like, I'm 40% uh, gotcha. white Spanish, then 34% African. Like my family's blood traces back to Congo and Ghana and, uh, you know, Nigeria, like all, all throughout, uh, Africa. And then, uh, 17% indigenous, you know, uh, some being from the Guanche people, the Guanches, you know, from the Canary Islands and then some Tainos yeah. from Puerto Rico, the native people in Puerto Rico. So it was just crazy. Like finding out, all the, you know, like my great, great grandmother was like this African woman named Rosa Ali who she, in the African slave trade, for whatever reason, the Spanish people kept their documents, whatever the Amer in America, in the in North America, uh, specifically in the United States, all, you know, all, all these people who were, who were brought from Africa, their documents were thrown away. It was almost like they didn't exist. Right. But for whatever reason, the Spanish kept all the documents mm -hmm. So it was like, because my family, you know, I had even not only was, was my great grandmother a slave, um, to this gentleman in, uh, in Puerto Rico, that's how my whole family got to Bayamon. I mean, I could talk about this all day. It was crazy. This dude was I mean, blowing my but mind. But isn't it crazy though? Cause I'm listening, like you telling a story. I'm like, okay. And so then what, but that's. It's crazy to know your heritage like that was really crazy. But then it's also crazy to see like your great, great grandfather probably wouldn't be surprised looking at you sitting right here is what I would, I mean, I'm just being real. It's like when you start to learn things, it sometimes it just makes things make sense. And so I'm just saying, like, I feel like you had that moment. Cause you just said, like, it was like, my life was telling me something. God was telling me something. Then I'm like, shoot, you found out you were descendant of a right. king. Like, come on. Right, now. right, right. Unbelievable. But so it also, so it also makes me think about too, like I talked about you're a singer songwriter and you have all kinds of different things going on. You have a new song that came out, Vigiano, yeah, Vigiano. I believe, yeah, yeah, which, the, the, which the really villain. literally means villain in Spanish, and it has a reggaeton vibe. So, what's the story behind the song? The inspiration to your music, like you multifaceted. No, man, I think you know. I wrote this song. Uh, I wrote this song probably a year ago or something like that. It was a while back. I wrote this song, but it was fresh off of uh, you know, I had a breakup, and and it was uh, you know, the the breakup wasn't you know, everybody thought it was because of one thing and it wasn't. And, um, you know, I hadn't said anything about it. And I, and I was just like, you know what, the only place I'm going to, the only place I'm going to talk about this is in my music and how this feels and the transition of, of what it feels like coming out of this relationship and how I felt all the way through to how I feel now, you know, that the, the project is not finished. I mean, the first two songs come out, one comes out in June, the other one comes out in July, but it's, it's, um, you know, it, it was basically this journey of like that initial feeling and then people's opinions about you and then what you think about yourself all the way through to now where, I, where I'm at now, you know, and, and the work that it's taken for me to, um, to, you know, and the work that it still takes for me to, um, you know, heal from that process and for me to, uh, you know, for me to like find myself after, um, after, you know, having a, a, a fucking crazy experience like the one I had, um, when, after that breakup, I mean, it was, it was a pretty, uh, it was a pretty intense time in my life. So I think now these songs are just how I feel about how I felt. Um, cause I don't necessarily feel the way I felt. I don't feel how I felt when I wrote Viano. I don't feel that way anymore, but in that moment, that's, you know, that's how I felt about myself or that's how it was crazy. And then, uh, you know, uh, but, but, um, but I'm super excited to finally get these songs out because, you know, and then start to write new ones about where I'm at now, you know? Right. And that's what I was going to say. Like, cause I mean, right now you're doing Twister and is there something that like, if it happens in your life, do you like, man, I got to get the pen. I got to write this moment out. Even if you're busy on another project, like, do you make sure that you write out your emotion in the moment? Do you get what I'm saying? Cause like right now you don't feel the same way you felt when you wrote the song, but you're, you wrote it in that emotion. So you got the raw and we got the exact energy. Do you have to do that live or can you go back and tap into that energy? 
Man, I, it just depends. Like, for example, right? <clears throat> Viano, I wrote months, almost maybe a year after the breakup even happened. So I had to tap back into that feeling. Maybe like it was, it was months after, you know, but it was like, I was sitting in the studio and I was like, yo, I still haven't written about this specific feeling that I had, you know? And, 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 and then I got in the booth and, uh, and the juice started flowing, you know, and then I'm really spitting. Now I was, you know, I had a whole different second verse, um, that was even more raw and it was a little, but, but I felt like the second verse was, uh, wasn't really getting to the point of what I wanted to say in the song. So I, I rewrote that second verse twice, actually. Wow. Um, and finally we got one that, that got again, like, like we said, straight to the point, like the other two second verses were like 16 bars and this was just eight. And I feel like this one mm. is way more succinct and to the point than the other two that were written that were actually raps. They weren't even, so I was saying way more. This the hmm. second verse is so you almost made it a little lighter to make sure that it you know like so what like what did you change when you went straight to it from sixteen to eight what changed in that in that transformation sixteen to eight you said you got right to I it. think you know what changed was like I kept <clears throat> it was almost like I was saying before right dancing around the point I was dancing around it you know you can find clever lyrics to say that that sound cool you know to dance around the point but the point was is that like this is what y'all said I was and this is who I know I am gotcha. you know and how do I say that and you know what let's shorten this verse and just say that shit in eight bars the same amount of time it took us gotcha. to do the first verse let's do the second verse with the same amount of bars and just get to the get to the point and um you know and and, and we did I just started flowing and just came out um, you know, and I, I changed that verse recently, a few months ago, you know, because I, I just kept bumping up against this second verse. And I was like, this shit is hard, but it's not. It doesn't feel like what I want to say in this song. It doesn't feel like what I'm trying to say, the message I'm trying to get out in this in this track. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, and, um, you know, finally, I think, you know, we landed on it, you know. Man, no, I can just, you basically got to put your emotions in a song and then even show the world your emotions. So I can understand how like getting that right could be a meticulous task. It's so exciting. And we are excited about the new movies that's, that's about to come out. Transformers, Rise of the Beast, out on June 9th. Anthony Ramos, man, I appreciate you coming through. You, This is a home for you. You're always welcome here. I appreciate you, man. No, thank you. Thanks for having me. This, this was super fun, y'all. I appreciate it.